All right, hello everybody. So at this point, you should have finished uh, do, 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 slide five of the digital notebooks. Looks like this. You should have that uh, ready to go. I'm going to be looking at this as you're listening to this. Um, so anyway, you're going to be looking at your next set of guided notes. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see here. All right, so the section that says revolution takes a turn. So again, just to kind of reiterate, so far, what we've been talking about, so before 1789, you had an absolute monarch, King Louis XVI was in charge, and then, boom, revolution hits, the storming of the Bastille. Uh, 1791, the National Assembly, um, they basically take power, the third estate, uh, take, take power of the country, and they rewrite a new constitution, and they are going to change um, the monarchy. They're going to let King Louis stay in place, stay in power. But they're going to limit his power, which is, again, a theme that we talked about during the Enlightenment. Uh, John, excuse me, John Locke looking to take power away from kings. All right, so now we're in 17, 1792. All right, so again, we're writing this down in our guided notes. Um, there will be an exit ticket you'll be asked to do after this. Uh, so anyway, so by 1792, French citizens were still unhappy. So things, so again, although they took some power away from the king, although you do have some power to the people now, um, there were still some major issues going on in France, um, and King Louis was to be was to, was still being blamed for much of the you know nation's problems. Um, so you start having this split that starts to occur. Um, you start having some people that start becoming unhappy that to, that allowing King Louis to stay in power. But you're limiting, you're creating a constitution, you're limiting his ability. He still is able to stay in power. And for some people in government, that was unacceptable. Um, a lot of people wanted him gone, out of the picture, get rid of the monarch. Um, and he started having these different factions that began forming within the French government, where you have some radical groups that want to get rid of the king, that want to get rid of the queen, uh, that want to basically start fresh. And then you have your moderate groups that want some change, but they want the limiting um, of the, uh, so they basically want this to stay status quo. They want a constitutional monarchy. They want, they're, they're okay with the king staying in power. And you have another faction that basically wants the king to have absolute power again. So there's this, this huge, you know, hurricane, tornado that's starting within the French government. We started having, you're pitting people against each other, essentially. Um, so you, have, you still have food shortages that are still going on. Again, King is, is still being blamed for that. Uh, a lot of people are very unhappy with, with the king uh, from what he's done throughout the, uh, his past. Um, on, on top of that, the National Assembly, they are going to pass several anti-clerical measures. So they're going to they're gonna take some church property. They're going to sell church property. Um, now think about, now why is that going to be a problem? Well... A lot of the poor farmers on the countryside are going to support the church, um, and this is going to become be unpopular amongst a wide range of the third estate. Um, so you're again leading to different factions and whatnot, uh, and then you saw voting problems that are going on. So is this really a true democratic republic? Women still don't have the right to vote. Only 60% of men can vote. So it means 40% of men can't vote still. Um, there's no peasant power. So, you know, really, are we having a democracy? Are things really changed that much um, when the National Assembly was formed? Well, not as much as what they hoped. Um, and then you have, um, as I mentioned before, you're going to have that um, those factions that are going to, you know, stay within the French government where many fear that this revolution is not done yet, that it's going to take a more of a um, extreme, reckless, violent turn uh, to it if things don't change. Well, things don't change. So as I mentioned before, you have this, you have really three different moderate groups or political groups that begin to form. You have your left wing groups in the French government, as I said before, that are very radical. They want big change. They want to get rid of the, mar the monarchy altogether. Now, this group is called the Jacobins. Uh, again, a very far left group. They want complete change. And then you have your your you know your moderate group. So this is basically who supported the National Assembly. These are very moderate people. They're open to some change. Um, they want a constitutional monarchy. They're okay with King Louis staying in power with having some you know some uh, 
rules and limitations on his power. Um, and then you have your far right wing, wing groups uh, that are very reactionary. They want to return to the past, how things were before the revolution. Um, they support the absolute monarch. They support an absolute ruler like King Louis the Sixteenth. Um, so again, you have these three different groups that are that really can't agree on much, and it's becoming pretty apparent they're not going to agree on much at all uh, moving forward. And things get really heated in terms of passing new laws and the direction they see France going. All right. So anyway, in 1792, you start having the the um, the majority of the French gar the French government starts to become clear, and that's the far left group, the Jacobins. They begin to take control of the government. They get elected in into government positions, and they now have majority to pass laws, to make rules, and to make sweeping changes. Um, so with that being said, they get what they want. They're going to they're gonna arrest um, and they're going to convict King Louis XVI for crimes against the state, um, conspiring against the nation. Ultimately, what King Louis does, he tries to escape. Um, when the Jacobins start taking power, he kind of starts to realize his fate. Whereas him and his wife, Marie Antoinette, they begin to leave. They, they try to leave France. They try to escape. Uh, and they try to go into Austria for where he's going to be safe. Because um, remember, Marie Antoinette is Austrian. Um, so when they get close to the border, they're actually caught um, by French authorities. And they're marched back. And that's why they're being convicted of conspiring with other foreign nations and for leaving their country, um, et cetera. So the big thing back then in terms of how, you know, the, we'll talk about this here in a minute, but something known as the Reign of Terror, the guillotine. You guys see this right here, this uh, in the picture. Uh, this is a big, like, contraption, this razor. They called it the Nation's Razor, where they would uh, put your head in a contraption. They would chop your head off. This razor would chop down, would come down and chop your head off. Um, so King Louis, his, here's his head, was paraded and shown off into the streets. Um... And then Austria and Prussia are going to declare war on France for killing for killing King Louis, uh, and they're also fearful that they're seeing this revolution starting to happen happen in France, and they're afraid that if they don't stop this revolution now, then things might spread into their countries. Again, think about Enlightenment. You have American Revolution, you have the French Revolution, you have Enlightenment thinkers. All these things are spreading, and this is going to lead to kings like in Austria, like in Prussia, that are going to become very sensitive to these things. They don't want this spread into their country. All right, so this is going to lead to the end of the monarchy. So on August 10th, uh, 1792, uh, a mob is going to storm the Palace of Versailles. They're going to take Marie Antoinette prisoner. They're going to demote her to a commoner. Um, and this is something that, again, this group that is going to uh, storm the palace, they're going to defy the assembly. The National Assembly tells them, don't do that, don't do that, leave her alone, um, and people don't listen to them. Now, obviously, this is going to show symbolically that the National Assembly lost their power. When the people are not willing to listen, uh, obey law, keep order, if you, if, as a government, if you lost that ability, then you're basically done. Um, so she was put in prison. This is, again, it's not in the slide or anything, but Marie Antoinette was put in prison and her kids were taken away. Um, you can say what you want about Marie Antoinette. I mean, obviously, she, did, she didn't have a very good reputation um, you know, during this time. Uh, however, it's kind of sad in her demise and how she will end up eventually dying. Um, you know, her kids were taken from her. There were rumors and how there was child abuse and yada, yada, and just a bunch of stuff that it was very questionable and more than likely not true. Um, but yeah, she her last her last days were, you know, very awful. Um, her kids, you know, kids were well, whatever. Anyway, um, so anyway, the the National Assembly is going to fall apart. Um, it's going to be replaced by again a new government. Um, so we're now going to our third one, the National Convention. Um, and when the National Convention takes place, again, this is by that Jacobins group, that far left-wing group is going to start to get rid of the National Assembly and start something new. Uh, and one of their things they're going to accomplish is they want to get rid of the monarchy. So an absolute monarch, the monarchy, the constitutional monarchy is no more. It's gone. And they're going to they're gonna form a democratic republic. Uh, so as I mentioned before, this National Republic or the National Convention, I'm sorry, National Convention, is going to be a radical group. Uh, from the Jacobins, and 
So it, so although the government's called the National Convention, it's really going to be this group called the Commune. This is the radical group who's going to basically form and kind of rule within the ruling class. So you have again the National Convention, but you have the smaller group, the, the Commune, who has the majority, they're the Jacobins. They're really going to run things, and that's when their policy is going to turn very, very far left, as you'll see here. So you have a few things with, with the Jacobins. You, this, is the, this is really um, the start of the Reign of Terror. Um, so again, this far left group, they want to move on to something new. They want big change. They want to get rid of everything that was old France. Uh, so basically their theory, their s slogan is, if you aren't with us, then you're against us. And guess what? They're going to go around killing tens of thousands of people who they believe are not with them. Um, so they create this group called the, the Committee of Public Safety. The first order of business is to institute a draft. So 18 to 40 or 45 year olds who can fight, you're drafted, you're conscripted into the French military. Second thing, they're going to transform public society. Again, as I said before, this is a very left-wing, big-time group that wants big-time change. They're, they want to erase everything about old France. They get, they, they get rid of the old calendars of France. They get rid of statues. They get rid of Catholic, the Catholic church property and close down churches. They change the metric system within France. Basically, anything that was a symbol of the, the monarch, whether it was absolute or constitutional, they want to start fresh and create a brand new culture, basically. Uh, so essentially what they start doing, they create this, this almost like this cult, this cult of supreme being, where basically what that means is it's a religious worship of the revolution, that you're, you're meant to be here. Your, your goal is to worship the revolution. You eat, sleep, and breathe it. Um, and this will lead into revolutionary tribunals being set up all over the country, where these are trials, and I put that in quotations, where meaning you really didn't get a fair trial. But basically, you had people that were accusing each other of being enemies of the state, of not worshiping the revolution or maybe questioning it. You had neighbors turning on neighbors, friends turning on friends, uh, family turning on family. I mean, like think about like today, like you know today's political climate and how you have um, you know very people who feel very uh, passionate about political ideas. And you know, I, I've seen it with Trump supporters or people with Biden supporters or whatever, and they clash. Um, so you have, even, I've seen that even with friends and family. Um, so um, these, these, tri these tribunals were set up all over the country, and if you were accused, you went on trial, and you were killed. Um, so who was the leader of this reign of terror? This was a guy named Robespierre. Um, he was a Jacobin, again, very, very far left, and he was the one who was really pushing for this extreme change that was occurring. Um, again, he's, his goal, what he's, he's going to set up is anybody that is uh, related to the monarchy, so priests and nobles, he's going to execute. Um, as I said before, he's going to hunt down traitors. He's going to set up these neighborhood tribunals and watch committees to watch over people and send out secret police to make sure that people are, you know, about the revolution and not being traitors. So 40,000 people were killed um, during this time, mostly by guillotine, with these public executions to really scare people. Uh, now, because of this, now this goes on for a little while, okay? Um, so you, you kind of can see here in terms of this chart, in terms of executions, you know, 28% of the executions were peasants. You can kind of work your way throughout, you know, the thing there and kind of figure that out yourself. But ultimately, this started off really fast and furious, a lot of death. And eventually, as the years went on, a couple of years, you start having people within the French government that start, at least start to kind of question, well, what are we doing? We're killing our own people. And then you start having some of Robespierre's close friends start turning on them. Eventually, it's going to lead to Robespierre's death, um, very violent death. Um, you know, later on, we'll, he'll receive the guillotine. So here's a picture of you, kind of see it here, a guy, a person laying down, strapped down, and letting a chop down right on the throat. And here's about the radical leaders during this time. Jean-Paul, it's not in your notes, Jean-Paul Marot, uh, he was one of the, he was the one who advocated violence. He had a newspaper uh, in France as well that really, that really advocated uh, for this violence and really turning in people who wasn't about the revolution. Uh, he will be assassinated by Charlotte Corday um, while he's in his bathtub. Um, George Danton, he started off, uh, he started off, you know, supporting the revolution and eventually he opposed the reign of terror and that will eventually Robespierre, this is actually his close friend, Robespierre actually ended up killing Danton uh, because eventually he turned. 
All right, so anyway, 